cinephiles, freaks, and weirdos. Tape heads, ghouls, and ghosts love to tune in and listen to psychotronic coast to coast. Skin slip and Owen Neal are going to reveal their thoughts on movies that most people don't dare to watch. Psychotronic. And that is brought to us by uh, Owen, who paid for this from the lovely artist of... Who, who was this again? Matt Farley. Ah, Matt Farley? You mean, you mean Don't Let the Rubber Beast Get You? And and, and and I can't remember the last the other movie. God, what was the other movie? Freaky Farley. Freaky Farley, yes, yes. The one with the references, the uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night. And the, uh, Slingshot Cops. <laughs> oh, man, we, we just still have to watch that one. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that that's our new theme. I'm gonna play, make everyone listen to it every week. Every week. Was it? Was it the? We got our forty four dollars worth. We 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 got we got our forty four dollars worth. Wow, oh, yeah, yes, absolutely, absolutely did. <laughs> Very excited to have that. Oh god, I fucked that up. Oh my god, the. Okay, sorry. I had a struggle on the pre show, getting this place just right, and then I fucked it all up. All right, so. Uh, this week we watched a movie. Uh, I I have uh. <laughs> I have been wanting to see for 15 years. I put it in, and me and my uh, I, she was my fiance at the time. We uh, we try we we watched it, and sometimes she just she wasn't having it. She won't even sit through a shit movie, right? So she uh, she's like, "We're done. Turn it off." I was like, "Okay." We got 15 minutes into the movie. 15 minutes in, her first her first audible groan was three seconds after the the music started playing. Because it's the cheesiest song ever that opens up this movie. But 15 years, I've been waiting, 14 years, uh, this movie was released 14 years ago. I bought it brand new back then for probably $20. It's, you can probably get it for like 3 bucks brand new off eBay right now, if I remember correctly. Um, it's uh, Raiders of the Living Dead. I, don't think, I think I've been not saying the title this whole time. The movie's Raiders of, Raiders of the Living Dead. I've been trying to watch this movie... Because nobody will watch this fucking movie, movie with, this, with me. But I made Owen watch it with me because that's his gig, right? That's our gig right here? We make each other watch movies? Uh, sure. Even though you refused to watch uh, one of the Home Alone movies. Yes, yes. This year, correct. <laughs> I, in fact, did. <laughs> You're correct. Because, ow. Jesus Christ. I'm good. First two are the only ones that need to exist. There's three more after that. We're good. Don't need to watch any of those. It's like Hellraiser. After the third one, you're good. You're done. Same with Children <laughs> of the Corn. Third one, done. Get out of there. Done. Don't torture yourself. <laughs> Our good friend Zelio Terror is uh, currently watching part seven of that series right now. As we speak. As we record this live. Is my headphone... Oh, God. Where is that cross static coming from? I hope that's not in the recording. I wonder if anyone in the audience is that cross static coming through the in the recording, or is that just my headphones? It might just be my headphones, honestly. My anyway, sorry. So um, yeah, uh, we we're gonna watch. We watched the the first the first of three versions of this film that we will eventually watch one day. Um, it's called Raiders of the Living Dead. It's by it's by Sam Sherman. Uh, edited from a uh, a Brett Piper film called Dying Day, which was first a- added upon by Sam Sherman, and then at, this is his subsequent third or second second attempt to add more material to make it a longer, more arduous process for us to watch. Uh, in fact, I I wonder if we if we end up watching this movie if we peel away the layers. Of like the plots, the subplots. I bet if we, I bet we, we watch the next version and it's like one of the whole subplots are taken out of the middle of it, and it's a shorter experience. And then, and then 
we'll watch the, the Dying Day version, which is like the cool shit that we all liked in the middle. Or in the ends, I should say. Till that with all the word padding. I wonder if that's how it's going to work out. I know I just rambled on for 10 minutes, guys. Owen, <laughs> why don't you take us to this movie before, I'll just, before I talk for another 10 minutes? I'll try. I tuned out pretty quickly, but... <laughs> There was, it starts out with uh, a, a jacking of a uh, tanker with a chemical waste, I assume. Some type of nuclear waste. Apparently just in the back of a... It looked like a milk truck. Yeah, it was just a, a random water truck, truck or something. Yeah, <laughs> It was a generic water truck. An overly long, slow jacking where he slowly climbed up on the back, walked down, got down, tapped on the window with his gun, and then climbed in. And then apparently a cop must have saw it, chased him, got stopped by a dump truck randomly. <laughs> it was a very weirdly cut together scene. And he uh, takes over some hostages at a power plant, machinery plant of some I sort. I think it's actually supposed to be a laboratory. It just looks like it's just because they <laughs> use a power, old power plant or machine plant or something. Something with smokestacks. But it's supposed to be like a hidden laboratory or something. Uh, SWAT shows up, uses his fucking Uzi taser gun thing. Yeah, it's an Uzi. It's, it is clearly a fucking Uzi and they've just made it pretend that it's a giant gun taser thingy. They've attached some bits and bob on it and called it a... And basically, it's a taser now. It's pretty neat yeah. that they decided to do that, but... And a, and a film from 1986, you know, it's a 40 year old, 30 year old movie. So he gets uh, the bad guy gets electrocuted, falls down. Cop weirdly walks in, pulls him by his legs a little bit, and then just walks over to the hostages. Guy just pulls out the taser, gets up. And you said he <laughs> shot him. I never heard a gunshot. There's a just really like... faint gunshot. It's there, though. It really is there. He shot it him just looks like he choked him for a second. Anybody knows bulletproof vests? Like there's like a vitals plate here and sometimes in the back too, but on the side there isn't always a plate. So this guy got shot in the side at close range with a the forty five caliber round, so it's gonna go right through his vest. Yeah. And then the t- taser cop with no taser anymore jumps down from the upper floor, immediately gets punched. And that guy bad guy runs off. He gets up, no gun, the old SWAT guy. Wearing the weird like bomb. Oh yeah, it's a bomb. It's a bomb crotch. disposable apron. <laughs> it's that giant apron you know, it's a bomb disposable apron with the big padding. It's just his regular ar- armor though, apparently, because this is the semi future, I guess. It's never determined what 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 uh. It's not really determined if it, this is the future or not, but there's there's enough future shit going on that you're like, huh. And there's an overly long scene of him trying to find the bad guy and then eventually punching him into electrical or tripping him on electrical wires so he's electrocuted. And Very long electrocution, wrong, very realistic. That uh, none of this fucking mattered. Did any of this play into the movie at all? Um, I believe it's supposed to imply that this event caused that gentleman to die and then he's resurrected after we are introduced to the grandpa and his grandson and that so whole that's subplot. supposed to be the guy that's bringing the zombies back yes because he sat this, up in the morgue it's he not the up, same guy though is it it is he's just <laughs> got makeup and tat and fucked up and like he's got a different haircut and shit Okay, that's the part I was really confused about. Like, yeah, that's the guy. He sits up at the morgue and he's like a super okay. villain zombie guy now. He's undead and he can raise the dead and <laughs> command the undead because of his electrocution at this lab laboratory. Well, I'm glad you Pres- recognize that. Presumably I, because of chemicals on the vehicle or something that he's exposed to. I just thought it was a bunch of random shit for no reason, <laughs> but okay. I, I'm, I'm gathering this from just watching this. None of this is like, spoken out loud. No one confirms this. This is my assumption based on what we saw. Okay, so if someone else has an alternate theory and it fits, it's just as valid, actually, because no one ever says otherwise. So <laughs> that's, 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 yeah. this kind, that's the kind of movie we're dealing with. Either they're going to tell you an expedition, exposition or you're going to have to make it up your own self. You know, just got to figure it out. Yeah, so now we're introduced to the doctor and his grandson. 
doctor's complaining about paying a hundred dollars to have his laser disc player fixed. <laughs> Oh the kid's like, I'll work on in it. In 1986, this guy's worrying about paying a hundred dollars to fix his laser disc player. Mother, that's motherfucker. That costs like 500 bucks still. It was like expensive <laughs> as shit equipment. He's complaining it's gonna only cost a hundred dollars to replace it. Fucking entitled rich bastard. <laughs> so the grandson's like, I'll look at it. He's like, I'm not out anything. <laughs> oh yeah, it's already it's, broken. It's already broken. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh yeah, you're not gonna avoid the warranty or anything. Sorry. That's that was what I was thinking. And then we're introduced to the guy and a girl. He's a newspaper guy, news guy of some Reporter, sort. Reporter, I think. I don't know who the fuck she is though. Yeah, she doesn't last very long, anyways. Yeah, some lady. But then it starts jumping around at this point. Uh, they end up somewhere. Those are the three attacked. plots. So the reporter guy. There is grandpa and grandson with their laser disc player gun that we haven't talked about yet. And uh, got, uh, Igor, the commanding commander of zombies, he looks <laughs> kind of like the reporter guy, so we got confused a few times. Yeah. Plus, it's like really grainy. Uh, it's really low budget. It's. Yeah, so the, for those who don't know, the uh, Sam, Retro Sam Sherman's company, Independent International Pictures Corp. Actually, hold on. I actually wrote fucking notes for this. What am I doing? One <laughs> second. I came prepared for this. All right. Sam Sherman, a producer for Independent International, uh, which can only describe as the full moon of its time. They're like really low budget, like really really low budget. They mo they mostly produced uh, for drive-ins and uh, grind houses and stuff like that. Uh, mostly drive-ins though. Took an original film by fellow director and effects man Brett Piper called Dying Day, which film buyers turned down, and he reshot it uh, as Dark as Dark Night, the, the dark with a not, dark normal night with an N, not with a K. So I know it sounds like Dark Night, like the Nolan film. Anyway, uh, buyers warmed up to it, and Sherman added even more footage and retitled it Raiders of the Living Dead. So that's where we're at with that. I was like, I summarized this. Like two paragraphs worth of shit in the back for you. There you go. I did some fucking go. homework for you guys. Don't tell me. Don't tell me I don't fucking work hard for this shit because I do. I don't. He does. Yeah, you do. You work hard enough. I roll out of bed and watch a movie. You make thumbnails, man. Yeah. Deal with my true. bullshit. You have to deal with me. You have to keep waking me up during movies. You have to, and you have to remember the plots of films. All right, you. <laughs> you actually don't down until you actually carry a lot of the, the show. So, don't ever ever discount yourself, sir. You're vital to the show. I thank you. I could not do the show without you because I can't remember shit. So, <laughs> you should see the yeah. fucking notes I wrote for Hellraiser last night while I was like half asleep. I can't understand them. <laughs> I'm gonna have to relaunch it again. Um, where were we in the plot? Oh yeah. So th at this point, the movie jumps around between the three subplots. So those are yeah. the three char three sets of characters we're following. Yeah, the reporter and the girl show up somewhere. I wasn't paying attention. But they're attacked by zombies, and the I guess the they're investigating. Zombie. They were investigating the, uh, the the base, the laboratory base that was hide that it was was captured by the by the king zombie guy. But uh, she's killed. He escapes. I thought she was just captured. Didn't they save her at the end? That was her at the end. They saved. I thought. Wasn't that the chick? I that saved? was the. No, that was the girl he meets later. I thought. Okay. She may have been captured, she may have been end. killed, who fucking knows? I'm pretty sure she's killed. <laughs> Probably. Anyway, so yeah, he escapes. Yeah, well, who cares about her anyways? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, God. He escapes. Uh, he's. It's raining now. He's walking the road. People are like, get the fuck out of the road. Yeah, no, no one, one will pull over him. and stop for him. No one will help him out. <laughs> one of them bitches. hits him. God. But a, a girl does stop. Helps him out, gives him breakfast, and then he rents a place with an old lady. Now he's kind of freaking out. He bo he goes and buys a gun, which was kind of a funny scene because he's like over there trying to buy a gun, and he's just like, "Government scary out there." And the guy's like, "Yeah," and then he pulls a <laughs> sawed-off shotgun out under the counter, like that's the cue, like you're all right with me. Won't right, it's a legal shotgun. He buys an illegal shotgun. Like, <laughs> why don't you buy a regular shotgun and saw it down like a regular, like the rest of us? Are you too good for that, Mr. Richie? 
Huh? Are you too good to do the elbow <laughs> grease to cut the fucking barrel off and the stub off so you can fit it in your jacket? Asshole. Jeez, and the guy wraps that's the it problem up this country. Like, uh... No one's willing to do the arm grease, to make elbow grease to make their shit illegal. Proper, like the proper good old way. With, that, with fucking brains and smarts and know-how. I just like the guy at the gun shop wrapped it up like a piece of meat and like right? a meat wrap. Yeah, oh, and he just walks around with it around town like it doesn't look like conspicuously like a slide off shotgun wrapped yeah, in brown paper. It. He's holding it when he buy, when he runs the room from the old lady. <laughs> this shotgun shaped brown piece of paper. He's yeah. just waving it around the room. He's walking around town with it under his arm. Like you look like you were holding a gun, dude. No. Put that shit away. He... And then he randomly takes that girl that helped him out to go see Three Stooges. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of weird. It's just a scene of them watching Three Stooges and laughing. Just two two random Three Stooges clips edited in there, just just to pad out the time a little bit more. <laughs> uh, so at this somewhere in there, the kids working laser disc player accidentally touches two wires and the the laser from it. Oh my blows god! Up his hamster. And this motherfucker <laughs> literally moments before was saying, saying, "Wouldn't it be funny if he sh- blew up the hamster up?" Like, yeah, it'd be great. And then it fucking happened, and we were just <laughs> shocked by it. Like, I can't believe that actually happened. Wow, he just killed and his then, fucking hamster. That somehow that got me on a tangent of trying to make you laugh, which you never did about how they just really killed a hamster and burnt it for a prop. See, because I don't find that stuff funny, right? <laughs> like, he's trying to make it funny with like, uh, yeah, it's hilarious. funny that we tortured and killed an animal. Yeah, no, that's just not funny to me. That's that's the thing. That, that's that's why I didn't laugh. But then I was like, I was like, well, fine. I'm gonna kill your joke. And I went all like super serious. Like, oh, they probably just took some uh, fake animal hair and wrapped it around a potato and burned it. Of course, Which I didn't let it die. Just as ridiculous, then... by the way. Because <laughs> later, uh, it's a terrible way to make a prop. Don't do that. This is a zombie lit on fire. Now that was great. Cause it was... And then I said that was a real human. They lit on fire. Yeah. Still no laugh. It's comedy gold, man. Yeah, but then I just imagine this low budget movie just killing people. And, and for then real. to further kill the joke, I just went on a tangent about how you know why hasn't anyone tried to copy that? I want some to do that with like more modern effects. Actually, put, yeah. light a puppet on fire and then animate it as it's being burnt, so it looks like someone burning alive, right? Like that's that's a really fucked up image that could really haunt somebody if you do it right. Jesus. Now was that one after he shot the one in the room? He was on the run. Yes, it's after he shot the shotgun three times somehow. Or was it earlier? No, the shotgun happened first because he dropped the shotgun at that scene. Because he lost Lost the shotgun at that after he after he. I know, but did that. So he gets. We can talk about. He was running and like he was leaving like a trail of fumes, wasn't he? And lit him on fire. Was that a different one? That was a different zombie, I think. I want to say it's the same one. Somewhere zombie. in the movie, the zombie, he burns a zombie. No, 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 because the, the <laughs> confrontation with that one zombie w- took place indoors, and the guy on fire was outside on the road. Yeah. So, Anyways. I mean, it could have been the same zombie later on, but it wasn't. I just want to point out he connected he's, scenes. So he shot the zombie three times with a sawed-off double barrel. Once in the hand, with his hand off. Then he fell and the down. Gut. In the gut, all right. Once in the gut, then he fell down, and then he shot his face off, which are all pretty decent effects, mind you, for the time, and the budget. But he never reloaded. Nope, just shot three times. It's a triple barrel shotgun. <laughs> I'm pretty sure four barrels exist. Well, yeah. I mean, the movie Undead. Also, there's uh, Phantasm Two. Oh, he shot, I've, I've he makes a dwarf the... killer, and he, he straps the two uh, sawed off or two. Um, uh, uh, breach load shotguns together and then sharpens them to a point so you can stab doors and pull the trigger. Cut them in half. You, know what you, don't, you don't see in movies enough is the over under where like it's a shotgun and then the barrel on top is a rifle round. Oh, so it's like a that's a that's called a master key because the idea is you have an assault rifle or a, or a sub or maybe it's just a regular semi automatic rifle with a shotgun and you pull the trigger on the shotgun and blow the handle off the door, kick the door and you've got your gun already. That, that's the that's why it's called a master key. No, I'm talking uh old school where it's a break open. Oh, the single shot ones? It's a single shot but one's uh, I think believe is a rifle round and then the Are you talking about the grenade launcher is... below? No, the no, big, it's with the big ones and the dunk, It's a barrel dunk. no it's it's two barrels on top of each other okay. and they're just they're just different rounds. Huh. I think the idea is, uh, you know, you're 
Oh, there's a bird shotgun round. Oh, there's a deer rifle round. Interesting. They're really old, though. That's probably why you don't ever see them. But. Gotcha. I, that's probably why I'm confused about, like, I'm talking about shit that's, like, yeah. in the 70s, you know. Fucking noob tubes and stuff. Dunk. Love that noise. But. <laughs> it's a very satisfying noise, damn it. <laughs> but, yes. So, at some point, a zombie burns and it looks cool because it, it looks moves. It's really cool because it's a fucking, it's an armature. It's a puppeteered armature and it's, like, burning while, like, trying to get at the person still. It's really cool. And then at some point, which we never see, he's, he, the kid's working on that shit, poking it and ripping off shit that shouldn't be ripped off. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he just has a fucking laser gun made out of it. Yep. And there is a friend that's a girl that he's hanging around and she's coming home with, it looks like she has a whole fucking laser disc. Like he realizes the kid's not going to fix that shit. And he, she just goes out and gets another one. <laughs> and, uh, some guys start cat calling her and, uh, all of a sudden they get zapped and, uh, they drive away and he saved her life. And he's like, I was shooting at a trash can. I heard screaming. So he completely missed and just happened to zap these guys. Cat <laughs> who she said, we're going to like abduct and kill her. Well, yeah, yeah, they're bad I people. I don't know about that. It's okay. it's okay. I mean, they were dirty perverts hitting on an underage girl, but... They're bad people. I don't know if they were going to drag her in a car or anything. <laughs> Let's not jump to conclusions here. Okay. I, I didn't. You did. You're the one jumping to conclusions. I don't know where your mind is, man. No, the girl was saying that. They are like, oh, they were going to take me. Uh, I know. All right. The kid should have made a joke being like, you think pretty highly of yourself, don't you? You're not that good looking. Oh, that's just mean. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah, apparently it's mostly harmless to humans. So now that there's the cops are investigating the uh, clearly two years dead corpse in the house. and uh, But that girl uh, is like, whatever. She, she tracks him down, drives somewhere. It happens to be some Three Stooges playing. So, of course, he's there. Course, he cannot watch clip. Three Stooges movies. Yeah. Another clip <laughs> I'm running from the cops, eyes. but Three Stooges. I'm, I'm how many theaters in the 80s were playing Three Stooges shorts? Not That's many, I imagine. <laughs> That's why he's like, a man, few, I gotta there see has this. To be a few, but and uh, it's either before or after that he ends up with the doctor. He's running around town. And the doctor helps him who happens he brings him home and he like tells him the whole story he's like that's not that crazy but now i know why you don't want me to call the cops she just believes he just <laughs> believes. <There's>... oh <laughs> sorry but bless you i sound painful <sighs> oh. you have to edit that out <laughs> uh yeah that really hurts every time i sneeze oh hurts right here in my chest weird birth defect Dive and <laughs> smacks my chest, my uh, my rib cage. Anyway, sorry. Continue what you're saying. Yes, the doctor believes his crazy zombie story, and uh, whatever. <laughs> so now the girl was helping him. Even they never really got back to the whole cop thing, really, did they? They were looking for him, and then just, that just went away. Yeah, just kind of. They just kind of dropped that subplot. It was just something that they needed at that moment to add tension for no reason. <laughs> and some point in there, the kid goes to the cemetery and sees that guy bringing a corpse back, which walks towards them, and it just like smash cuts to them eating breakfast, telling the grandpa what happened. And they're like, you shouldn't be doing that. And like, okay, grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just that uh, you shouldn't be doing that. That's it. I'm like, really? Like, what the fuck? You're not gonna like reprimand them. I don't know. Go kill the zombies. I don't know something. Christ, Grandpa, uh, you're the worst. Reporter, reporter ends up talking to some really bitchy library woman. Well, it's really nothing to do with them, but then tells them the whole story about they ring bells and open prisoners years ago, and they did experiments on them. <coughs> so he heads out there. I guess we're pretty much at the finale now. Yeah. He heads out there. At some <laughs> point, the girl, the uh, Sorry. Sorry that again. girl was kidnapped at some point. Okay. The new girl right. that he went to theaters with. Uh, 
he shows up and then we he's walking around with like a really terrible day for night sh- uh, with a flashlight oh and then for like 10 fucking guy. minutes <laughs> for 10 minutes he's wandering around in this blue skies it's like oh and it's really bad bad day for night I seen some horrendous day for night. This really is uh, this is up there in the Hall of Fame for bad day for nights. Yeah, because it's like dark and stuff where he is, but like the sky is still super and blue. You can see his six foot shadow coming off. <laughs> yeah, that's true too. In the middle of quote unquote night. So I just do it during high noon. But even more confusing, there's a guy that all of a sudden sort of looks like him holding a machine gun. Yeah, it really confused us for like two minutes in the movie. Like, wait a minute, what? What's going on? Oh, wait, there's the guy. And we kind of figured it out. Yeah, because yeah, he's like, why did he take his leather jacket off? And where did he get a gun? Why the, oh, the he's zombies dying just now. kill him. Oh, what a poor bastard. <laughs> that was, he, he was so close to the end of the movie. Oh, wait, this is the new guy. Oh, that's the guy. Wait a minute. Who the fuck was that guy? That, that, that was. Yeah, that was pretty much the whole fucking conversation right there. Just, it's like, who is the guy with the machine gun at this old jail? Apparently some dude. He's just hired to walk around and protect an abandoned jail? Or he's just some guy and got murdered. He just happened to have a gun. <laughs> Coincidence, I suppose. Yeah, sure. It was just like, we need another kill. It's a nonsensical movie. You're asking you, And you're asking <laughs> to make... We're making asking to make sense from it, so... So he's still walking around with his flashlight. I don't know what his plan is. And then randomly, the kid, his girlfriend, friend that's a girl, whatever she is, sure. and grandpa show up. Randomly, he now has two laser guns. Maybe that's what the second laser displayer was for. So I need two of these. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what I didn't think about that. Maybe she wasn't buying a new one. Maybe she bought an old one, a broken one, or, <laughs> and, or she's bringing one from her house. Maybe that's what it was. The wait, best wait, wait, thing. Didn't she say at the beginning that her, her dad got one recently? Maybe I wasn't really in I think that was that. dialogue for some reason. <laughs> anyway, bring it over so I can destroy it. Yeah, bring it over so I can turn it into another gun so we can <laughs> do shit with it or something. But uh, I couldn't stop laughing at uh, Grandpa dressed like like what you would imagine a little kid dressing up as a cowboy would look like. Oh like my he had god! A, a, a way had too the... small cowboy hat on. Tiny had, little like... bandana. The shirt and, that had the, like the little rope designs and around. And this gentleman was rotund, so he was like <laughs> bell shaped, and he's got this tiny <laughs> fucking foot, and like his cowboy attire from his man tits up, you know. <laughs> and then he's got a longbow bad. and a quiver full of arrows. And the quiver's on his hips, in a very not comfortable or useful place. It's gonna get in the way. He's like, you know, I'm trying ready. To, try to get an arrow from here. It's like go from here. You want to go kill some this zombies? Feels, this feels of... way less coordinated for some reason. I don't know. Go kill some zombies out of prison. Let's go. That's right. And apparently I... some arrows to the chest will kill zombies, we find out. As well as, like, they didn't, like, at this point that guy was gone from their house. Like, how'd they know, like, that he needs our help? Was there a discussion that I missed at some point? Like, I don't know. Going to the prison, I, I, mean, I must like, have missed it, too. <laughs> we'll join you. At some point, I was I was I was packing a bowl and I missed some plot, so maybe that was when it was near the end. So, but uh, yeah, they show up. The girl and the guy are at gunpoint. We're introduced to that doctor. Who, oh, that doctor's evil that we saw at some point, and I completely forgot. And he's working with the guy that came back from the dead, who brings the zombies back to the dead with his blood and ringing bells and shit. Doesn't really matter, but. But uh, the kid zaps the guy with a gun. He drops the gun. They run off. Luckily, the, the zaps kill the zombies or disable them or it something. It turns off their... Re- I don't know. It never says, but I'm assuming it turns off the reanimated gene, thus turning them off, so to speak. <laughs> but I like the kids are like doing great on their own, just zapping zombies. And then like they'll zap a zombie, and then the grandpa will shoot him. It's like, like he's Thank- amounting to something. Thanks, grandpa, you asshole. Yeah. You shot the guy we already killed. <laughs> right. Where to go, kill stealer? <laughs> so they're in the, they're in like the middle of whatever. It's supposed to be a prison, but we were having a discussion about it's either a mission or like an old fort. Or possibly both. There's z- <laughs> there's zero jail cells basically. Yeah, it's not really a jail. It's not really <laughs> a laboratory. It's whatever the fuck happens to be. But yeah, and then. 
randomly the other jack guy reporter is up there and the zombie king as we call them just has like a like a chunk of log he's gonna hit him with but he just holds it just stands there for a long period of time and was he, he shot he, and he waits until he notices him to uh to hit to start start taking action He's literally the guys. The reporter's shooting. Oh, we had another zombie, and and this guy's just standing there like this, like uh the whole time. Like you could have killed him. You you could have killed him. I don't remember what he even hit him with. The gun. He shot him in the chest with a gun, and he died with bullets. Damn. Sure. But, I mean, and he fit, no, he fell off the top and got spiked. But yeah, and I, that after he got shot with bullets. Like he had, both things happen. I, it, the thing is, I think it was, yeah, and he was still kind of alive on on the spike, well, spiked on the ground, but he was stuck. And then he randomly just steals the uh, laser gun from the kid and just shoots like ten zombies. And uh, but then the at some point the doctor shows up with his pistol, like he's gonna shoot him. But uh, the old man just slowly walks in from the side and gingerly takes the gun from him. He's like, whoa, you yeah. got me. Oh, oh, easy there, cowboy. Like, Jesus Christ. Did they just sad. take him somewhere? Did they kill him? I don't remember. I, I, no, I think they arrested him. I think that was the idea. They turned him over to the authorities. All I remember is the kid, like, angrily grabbing his laser gun back from the guy. Like, give me that shit. It ain't yours. <laughs> I could have killed those 10 zombies but yeah that's how it ends or it actually ends with that song again do, 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 like do, do, four do, minutes do, 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 of just still shots of dead zombies as they walk away and they just leave fucking zombie corpses everywhere although it's not really shown that they necessarily bite and bring people back from the dead so I assume that's not a thing in this yeah it's a different kind of zombie it's a supernaturally controlled one or whatever well, i guess we don't have to worry about birds eating them and then <laughs> zombifying and flying around it should be a sequel like just zombie birds flying around there's a few movies with zombie birds we should probably watch some of those at some point there's a movie called zombie birds yeah it's called killing birds it's called zombie sounds, five killing birds sounds fucking terrible it is fucking terrible it. it's by bruno Mattei. <laughs> i love bruno Mattei, so i'm totally down with watching it even though it's a pile of shit anyway so uh did you have a favorite part? Cowboy Grandpa. Burning Zombie. That was my favorite <laughs> part. But Cowboy Grandpa was really close. And I also All really love the cheesy fucking song. So It's true. I love it. I made an MP3 of it many, many years ago because I loved it so much. And then every just... now and then, I would torture the ex. Well, she, when she wasn't my ex, I had to torture her with it by playing it really loudly. Because she couldn't. Because she hated the fucking movie. She was like, turn it off. But she just every time I play that movie, that song, she re remembered how bad the movie was. It's great. In other words, uh, there's a reason why I'm single. I'm an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> and, uh, it's not yeah. the worst thing we've seen. So well, is that? That's true. I'm not. It's not the worst thing I've done either. <laughs> so yeah, um, what are we gonna watch uh, next week? Aren't we going to watch Friday the 13th? Oh, right. Are we doing a double bill, though? Potentially. Okay, we might be doing a double bill, but we are for sure watching Friday the 13th on Friday the 13th. Uh, and yes, this is totally psychotronic because it was on TV all the goddamn time. No, I know it doesn't quite count, but shut up. It's my show. That's, that's what I'm going to say. Of course it counts. Everything counts as far as I'm concerned. Well, I'm not going to watch any big budget blockbusters or anything. What if I pick them? No. Like, we can't, dude. It's not within the spirit. I mean, come on now. Depends. But we were going to watch Heavyweights. I don't think that necessarily counts. Yeah, but it was played on TV in the 90s ad nauseum. Because <laughs> it's fucking it great. Came, yeah, and it came, that's where it came to science fan base. It didn't do that great in like theaters, you know? It made, made its name in on home video. That, that's, my how... psych that's the spirit of Psychotronic is the movies that made fucking... their, way, their way on home video and guess what Friday 13th counts because they it made its name on home video you know what I mean the terrible fucking cover of heavyweights I mean it made its name in theaters too but it also they... you know, survived for many years because of TV 
where they pasted their heads on different kids' bodies, holding the hoagies. Did you ever notice that? Jesus, no. <laughs> it's it's not their bodies, and they're like they're the wrong size. I don't re- I don't remember this. So we'll have to watch that during the, our summer. When we're doing a summer camp or summer festival, we're just gonna choose a bunch of summer themed movies. No particular order. So. Uh yeah um my uh, uh, uh yeah do you recommend this movie did you like it or did you rate it? Mm, it's worth a watch. It's worth if a you're watch. into shitty movies. So it's only like three dollars and sixty cents on eBay. So it's worth picking up. It's worth a gamble. You might like it. Plus, there's two different other copies. There's the uh, there's um uh the uh, Dark Knight and Dying Day are both on here on second disc. So plus, there's a commentary with Sam Sherman, who uh, that that's probably gotta be really fascinating. And a rarely seen House of Terror live horror show promo. But I uh, I know it's not available on Amazon, so good luck finding it. I mean, it's out of print. It's been out of print for many years now. But there's got to be a ton of these floating around because I doubt anybody gave a shit about this movie. But they should have. There you go. Any last words? Nope. All right. See you next week, folks.